How much do you think you know about these colorful bricks? Only a little? Maybe a lot? After hearing the five craziest unknown LEGO facts that I have in store for you, later on in the video, you'll question everything you thought you knew about the beloved childhood toy. But for now, let me show you how 1,140 pieces of LEGO are made every second by automated robots. Here on the factory floor. Landing a job as a LEGO set designer is one of the most coveted jobs in the world. And that's exactly where a LEGO design begins, as an idea. At LEGO HQ, Vice President, which is one of the highest levels a designer here can hope to reach, open the doors to dreamers through recruitment workshops. This is done in an effort to harness young creative minds and their fresh new ideas that could be of interest to the world at large. Ah uh, yes, recruiting kids to invent new ways for parents to go broke. Among thousands of hopefuls, only very few finalists make it. Each receives a box of bricks with one challenge, create a new LEGO world. No pressure, right? Of course, passion is a required character trait. Talent is another important thing, but it's also their ability to fit in with the rest of their team that gives an applicant a fighting chance at making it through. Hope your passion includes pretending to like your co-workers. Over 200 designers from around the world work at LEGO in Denmark, bringing skills from the comic books, superheroes, and roleplay reenactment industries. Hundreds of people develop new products, and a factory in China employs thousands. And here's something you probably didn't know. Every year, LEGO receives thousands of random set ideas, most of which never get made. However, if your design happens to gain 10,000 supporters and is approved for production, you get 1% of the net profits. So basically, you do all the work and LEGO throws you two coins and a toothpick for your troubles. In terms of your regular degular plain old LEGO bricks, their manufacturing process starts with this unique material that you can see on screen now. It's a strong plastic called acrylonitrile butadiene styrene, or ABS for short and it's picked because it is strong and cheap, allowing LEGO bricks to last for many years of play at minimal cost to produce. Every day, large trucks arrive at LEGO factories, carrying loads of small plastic pellets. These pellets come in basic colors like blue, green, red, yellow, black, gray, and white. If LEGO needs different colors, they mix these basic colors together to create them. Speaking of color coordination, LEGO even applied it to their cafeteria food. Red meant, this will clog your arteries, yellow was, moderation is key, and green was, congrats, you're eating rabbit food. Back on the production line, the plastic pellets are taken through giant pipes into one of 14 silos. Each silo can hold up to 33 tons of plastic, the same weight as five and a half fully grown African elephants, from these silos, the pellets travel through more pipes into the injection molding machines. Now comes the important part. Turning these small plastic pellets into Lego bricks, spaceships, castles, farmyard animals, and all other kinds of pieces. The factory floor is filled with more than a thousand machines, working non-stop 24 hours a day. But strangely, there are no people around. This is due to the almost fully automated nature of the company's production line. I bet somewhere around here there's a lonely janitor just waiting for one of the machines to say, good morning. The ABS plastic pellets are heated to a temperature of nearly 450 degrees Fahrenheit, or 232 degrees Celsius. At this point, the plastic melts into a thick liquid. This hot liquid plastic is then forced into metal molds with a pressure of up to 150 tons. The metal molds are like hollow boxes shaping the melted plastic in the same way ice cube trays shape water. All that just to get lost under the fridge. As soon as the plastic is shaped inside the mold, it cools down and hardens. Within just 10 seconds, the new bricks drop into containers below, ready for the next step. When a container fills up with bricks, a robotic vehicle picks it up and moves it to the storage area. Inside this large storage hall, an automated system places each container on the correct shelf, organizing them neatly. Now it's time to add details to the bricks. This is the decoration and printing step. Some LEGO bricks have unique prints on them, like tiny words, pictures, or a tiny made-you-look-just-to-mess-with-your-brain. 
Machines carefully print these designs onto the bricks. But bricks are just the top of the iceberg. There are also little Lego people, remember? This machine alone produces over 15,000 Lego heads every hour. A specialized rubber stamp gives each head a face. Smiles for the heroes and frowns for the villains. The Lego bodies are made in the same way, with gizmos and doodads painting their uniforms, armor, and outfits. Firefighters get their suits, knights get their armor, and pirates get their little plastic legs. After printing, every Lego brick must go through a quality check stricter than Australian border security. If the dimensions of the brick are just one thousandth of a millimeter off, it will be rejected. If a camera notices a Lego figure school uniform printed the wrong way, the system quickly removes it using a blast of farts. Then it goes through the machine again until it's correct. Machines press and pull bricks apart to make sure they stick together properly, which is known as the clutch power test. It measures the right balance. Strong enough to stay connected, but easy to pull apart without breaking. Basically the science of, will this make a child cry? There are many other tests, too. Lego bricks are squashed, dropped from different heights, and pulled apart using ropes to check their strength. For safety, Lego tests bricks meant for toddlers to make sure they can't break them apart. One of the safety tests includes a chemical check. Scientists at LEGO create fake sweat and saliva to see if the colors and design stay on the bricks even after lots of play. Since young children love throwing things, LEGO also does a stomp test and a drop test to make sure the pieces can survive being stepped on or tossed around. So yeah, LEGO quality control is pretty much Navy SEAL training. And that's exactly why they have a near-perfect system with fewer than 18 defective bricks per million made. This helps the LEGO team sleep at night knowing that they don't need to worry about LEGO pieces reaching the mouths of children or collectors in bad shape. Now we reach the final step, packaging. How do all these pieces end up inside the LEGO sets we buy? The finished bricks must be sorted and packed carefully. Since some LEGO sets have hundreds or even thousands of pieces, the sorting must be done quickly and without mistake. Tech gizmos separate and count the pieces using optical sensors before placing them into small boxes. Once the pieces are counted, other gizmos drop the correct number of pieces into cassettes, small containers. These cassettes then travel on along conveyor belts. LEGO is also focused on making their packaging better for the planet. Finally, a feature no one buying LEGO will think about for even one second. They made the resolution to have all their packaging be 100% sustainable by... <clears throat> oh, this year. Unfortunately, LEGO has not achieved this goal. Currently, only 93% of their packaging by weight is made from paper, cardboard, and other paper-based materials. Pathetic. After the LEGO sets are packed into their colorful boxes, they continue moving along conveyor belts. The smaller boxes are placed into larger cardboard boxes. The smaller boxes are placed into larger cardboard boxes. While this is going on, machines automatically close and tape these bigger boxes, and robotic arms, known as palletizers, stack them onto pallets. Another robot quickly spins around the pallets, wrapping them tightly with plastic film so they stay secure during shipping. Finally, an actual human being, thank god, moves the pallets to the storage area where they wait until they are shipped to stores all around the world. And that's how LEGO sets end up on store shelves ready for children and fans everywhere to pick out their favorite one, take it home, and start eating. I mean, building. But before we jump headfirst into the top 5 wildest LEGO facts, let's travel back in time to witness the weird way LEGO even came to exist in the first place. The story of how LEGO was invented is almost too goofy to be real. It all started with a guy named Ole Kurt Christensen, a Danish carpenter who originally made wooden furniture. But then the Great Depression hit and suddenly people weren't exactly in the market for luxury wooden wardrobes. So in a move that felt like throwing darts blindfolded, Ole thought, screw it, I'll make toys. At first he made wooden ducks on wheels because obviously that's the next logical step after cabinets. But just when things were picking up, his entire factory burned to the ground in 1942. And because fate has a dark sense of humor, it burned down AGAIN a few years later. Somewhere a fighter fighter was probably placing bets on round 3. 
instead of giving up, Ole rebuilt once more, but this time he decided that maybe, just maybe, it wasn't the best idea to build his entire factory and everything in it out of highly flammable material. So bro pivoted to plastic, which back then was just another way of saying witchcraft. Then in 1947, Ole somehow acquired a plastic injection molding machine, which in those days was like your grandma casually owning a nuclear reactor. He used it to make tiny bricks based on a British toy design, but there was a problem. Nobody cared, not a single soul, not even in the slightest. I mean, the bricks didn't even stick together properly. That is until 1958 when his son, Godfred, had the giga brain idea to add tubes inside the bricks, creating the stud and tube locking system. And just like that, Lego was born. Now, starting at number five and counting down to number one, here are the top five most shocking fun facts about Lego. Ready? Number five, Lego bricks are basically immortal and that's a problem. Lego bricks are like cockroaches, except worse because they don't even need food, water, or oxygen to survive. Scientists have found Lego pieces in the ocean that are over 1,300 years old. Okay, more like 40 to 130 years, but they still look like they just fell out of a kid's toy box last week. That means if you've ever lost a Lego piece at the beach, congratulations, it's probably still out there. Meanwhile, Atlantis is just a lost city made entirely of Legos. But there is one teeny tiny problem. These things don't decompose, ever. Your great great grandchildren could be stepping on the same Lego brick you did, cursing your name just as loudly. We're talking about a toy that will outlast entire civilizations. Future archeologists might dig up a perfectly preserved Lego set and assume it was some kind of religious artifact. And honestly, they wouldn't be wrong. Number four, Lego once made a brick so dangerous they had to ban it. Lego prides itself on safety. You'd think the most dangerous part of a Lego set would be stepping on a piece barefoot. Nope. Meet the Lego magnet set from the late 2000s, a product so unintentionally hazardous it got yanked off shelves faster than your little cousin disappearing when it's time to clean up. Why? Because the magnets were stupidly strong. Kids started swallowing them, no surprises there, and if you swallowed more than one, the magnets would find each other inside your body and clamp together through your intestines. Doctors had to perform emergency surgeries to remove them before they caused internal injuries. Nothing like a toy that lets kids accidentally magneto their own organs. After multiple incidents and probably a lot of very angry parents, Lego had no choice but to recall the set and pretend it never happened. So if you still have one of these, congrats, but maybe don't let Vito or your kids near it. Number three, NASA secretly sent Lego bricks to space, but didn't tell you why. NASA sending Lego to space sounds more like something an astronaut would do just for fun. Like, hey, let's see what happens if I throw a minifigure at zero gravity. But no, this was an official experiment. In 2011, NASA launched three minifigures aboard the Juno spacecraft heading for Jupiter. But why go to all the trouble? Turns out they wanted to test how the plastic would react to extreme space conditions. And get this, there's still a Lego figure orbiting Jupiter right this very second. Yes, Lego is literally on another planet before most of us have even left our home states. And if aliens ever find that thing, they're going to be so confused. First contact is just gonna be them handing it back like, uh, you dropped this? Number two, Lego bricks can be used as a legal currency and criminals know it. When you think of organized crime, you probably think of stacks of cash, gold bars, maybe a duffel bag full of diamonds. But in the criminal underworld, there's another highly valuable commodity, Lego. No, really, police around the world have uncovered massive Lego crime rings, organized groups that steal rare and expensive Lego sets because they are stupidly easy to resell hard to track and appreciate in value like stocks. Some sets, like the Lego Millennium Falcon, can resell for thousands of dollars, making them just as valuable, if not more, than some actual forms of currency. In 2022, police busted an international Lego crime ring that had been stealing and reselling sets. And it makes sense. 
LEGO is compact, valuable, and doesn't expire, making it the perfect item for money laundering, theft rings, and smuggling. If you ever see someone paying for a used car with a LEGO set instead of cash, just look the other way. Number 1. There's a secret underground vault that holds every LEGO set ever made. Deep in the heart of LEGO's Denmark headquarters, behind a locked, highly restricted door, lies the vault. No, not the kind of vault where they keep gold bars or government secrets, something arguably more important. A copy of every single LEGO set ever produced since the 1950s. Think about that. Every LEGO set from your childhood favorites to the weird ones nobody talks about is locked away like it's the Ark of the Covenant. And the best part is that only a handful of people have ever been inside. The private time capsule of LEGO raises so many questions. What's the security like? Are there laser beams? Is there a LEGO Indiana Jones set inside the vault? Which would be extremely ironic. All I know is that this collection exists and you will never be allowed to see it. Which, let's be honest, just makes you want to see it even more. But that's nothing compared to this bonus fact. LEGO once made a toy so cursed that people refused to buy it. You'd think LEGO would have learned by now not to stray too far from, well, LEGO. But in 2003, they decided to gamble on a new toy line called Galador. It flopped so hard the world pretends it never existed. Instead of bricks, Galador featured weird, lanky action figures with limbs that snapped off. They didn't even connect with normal LEGO pieces. They just detached. LEGO really woke up and chose Amputation Simulator for kids. Stores couldn't even give these abominations away. Kids hated them. Collectors ignored them. Even today, if you mention Galador to hardcore LEGO fans, they'll look at you like you just insulted their grandmother. The line failed so spectacularly that LEGO almost went bankrupt trying to recover from it. It's a reminder that even billion dollar companies can fumble the bag so hard they almost delete themselves. Would you ever pay for a Galador set? Comment below, I'm curious to hear your response. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta take my dog to the vet. <sighs> he had the genius idea of inhaling a whole heap of Lego the second I turned my back. But before that, I think congratulations are in order. You now know exactly how Lego was made. And since you're already here, give this next video a watch. It might just shock you.